Alright, this is my best attachment video for all the original SSR characters. Obviously, these are subjective in my experience, blah blah blah, you know how it goes. So based on the rarity of your attachment, it can have up to 4 stats. The first 2 stats are fixed, which means we just need to focus on the last 2 or the bottom 2 stats. Alright, so we're gonna start off strong. The stats I recommend prioritizing for strong is dodge rate or HP, ideally both, than any of physical defense or energy resistance. Having more HP works well with his attack absorb perk. I personally believe that having more dodge rate is more beneficial than having bonus armor or resistance as dodge rate completely negates enemies damage and dodge rate is especially effective against critical focus characters such as Preston, Zimmer, and the Zetan. Attachment wise, I've been using Overseer's initiative for both PvP and PvE for a couple of months now. Essentially, Overseer's initiative allow strong to die behind enemy attackers absorb and possibly redirect attacks as well as abilities leaving their support or healer vulnerable if they do not have a secondary tank however there are a few things to look out for such as nick valentine's perk it will stun strong when the fight starts thus stopping the effect of always serious initiative also look out for any characters with crowd control using always serious initiative example would be again nick valentine kate sturgis etc which is why sometimes guardian's army is also a great defensive option to help deal with this problem and the spell shield does regenerate after 50 seconds also keep in mind, strong will die behind enemy attacker very early, it could leave your secondary tank, support, or healer vulnerable, so please position your dwellers accordingly. Occasionally I also run the medic power armor, this set scales better as strong gets stronger. It utilizes strong's uh, attack absorb perk, increasing its healing effectiveness, thus making strong even more durable. Alright, up next we got the antagonizer. The stats you should prioritize are dodge rate or HP, ideally both. More HP is also beneficial in this scenario because she'll reflect more damage with her ability. In terms of attachment for the antagonizer, I recommend the Atom Cats for both PvP and PvE. The Atom Cats provide a unique set effect for the antagonizer which heals her for an additional 10% off her max HP when her ability is activated. And of course there's also the 20% max HP recovery in 6 seconds that comes with the attachment. This gives her a lot of survivability and damage at the same time. So for Father or Sean, the stats you should prioritize are damage, HP, ideally both, as more damage will also increase the effectiveness of his heal. Now assuming Father is the only healer on your team, I believe Institute Scholar is going to be the optimum set, as the 25% increased healing is much needed on him. Now to mention his unique set effect which gives him another 8% healing, the 2 set effect will also increase the effectiveness of his heal as well. You can also use Cure's Cure when up against a team with a lot of debuffs, and that's because unlike Carrington, once Father summons the Synth unit, it is guaranteed to heal twice without the possibility of being interrupted. And the pause in between each heal, roughly 4 seconds give or take, also work in favor towards this because after the initial heal, if enemy team apply another debuff on you, you have a second heal to take care of that as well. Wasteland Apothecary can also work, but personally I prefer to use Wasteland Apothecary on my secondary healer. That's because Father has a slightly longer cooldown which means it won't be as efficient to use this on him compared to let's say Carrington. But yes, if you're running two healers on your team, this is definitely an option worth considering given how situational Curious Cure is. Alright, up next we got Dr. Carrington. Stats wise, I would recommend prioritizing damage, HP, ideally both. As for attachments, because Carrington's ability has a relatively short cooldown, I generally prefer to use Wasteland Apothecary to capitalize on that. The effectiveness of Wasteland Apothecary increases as the battle goes on. Otherwise, you can also use Institute Scholar if Carrington is the only healer on your team. But do know that the 10% difference between the two attachments, uh, on Carrington specifically, is more noticeable when he's higher level. Wasteland Apothecary and Institute Scholar are both good in their own perspective, but from a reliability standpoint, Carrington will be able to proc or trigger the effect of Waste and Apothecary more often given his short cooldown. Next, we got Scarab and Naraya. The stat you want are damage, HP, ideally both. Again, I'd like to emphasize that for Scarab and Naraya, try and get both if possible, because in terms of heal alone, Scarab and Naraya is not on par with the other two SSR healer, so to take full advantage of her ability, you will want more HP as the shield Naraya provides for your team is based on her max HP. With that said, attachment wise, Curious Cure certainly seems very fitting given she gets the extra 7% HP, but I would suggest using this under the circumstance which she acts as a secondary healer or when you're up against a team with a lot of debuffs, which is why in general I would recommend Waste and Apothecary just for a bit of utility and the extra healing is nice. The reason to use this over Institute Scholar is that even with the additional 10% from Institute Scholar, her heal is just not high enough to justify using Institute Scholar. Okay, on to the support. First up we got Nick Valentine, the stats you want to prioritize are HP over damage. 
ideally both. I personally really enjoy using Overseer's Initiative for both PvP and PvE. This set will give your team an advantage in PvP when the fight begins. And what I mean by that is while your enemy generates less AP from your attack, you're able to help your team get their abilities quicker, and I find that very helpful. Here's a tip, you should position Nick to be as close to the front as possible so that the stun will be almost instantaneous after its activation because Nick's ability is actually an extremely quick projectile. Nick in my opinion is tanky enough to be used as a secondary tank which is why I suggest using Miniman last stand if the one and only tank you have on your team is strong. Because in this scenario, when strong is all the way behind enemy attackers and Nick is acting as a secondary tank, he will be able to absorb some of the damage, thus activating the effect of Miniman's last stand. As for Eddie's piece, I already went over why Eddie's piece does not work on Nick. To summarize that video in short, if Eddie's piece is equipped on Nick, it does not boost Nick's ability damage, nor does it boost the damage that your team deals when the enemy is stunned by Nick. And Nick won't be able to attack after casting his ability due to attack interval, which means he can't utilize the effect of Eddie's piece. Alright, moving on. I don't think the best attachment for Sarah is currently in the SCA version at this time. As a support, I'd like to run Overseer's Initiative. Remember that although it will be easier to take down tanks, it does give a bit of AP to your opponent. For this set specifically, you want to prioritize damage or HP, ideally both. You can also run Combat Zone Gladiator to utilize her 200% crit multiplier. This will give her a lot more damage to her ability, as well as her basic attack. Now you can also run Power of Good Neighbor, but I prefer Combat Zone Gladiator a bit more because her ability is an AoE and that can hit everyone. Meaning the bonus damage from Combat Zone Gladiator is used more effectively. You can also run something called 2x2, two, two, two attachments from two different sets, taking advantage of the two sets effect only, and this will activate both of the two set effect, thus getting 14% more damage. Now I've tried the Antagonizer's Wrath with Sarah's ability, and through my testing, the number I got did not indicate that the effect of Antagonizer's Wrath applied to her ability. But if your result is different, please let me know. Up next we got Kellogg, the stats I recommend prioritizing for Kellogg would be damage HP, ideally both. Attachment wise, Antagonizer's Wrath is the one which works well with him, and I have tested the effect of Antagonizer's Wrath does work with Kellogg, further reducing the enemy's damage, and the bonus damage of the 2 set effect is also very beneficial for him. So for attackers, first up we got Elder Maxin, the stats I recommend are damage and HP, ideally both. Attachment wise, I've been having a lot of success with the Jester, because Elder Maxon's ability applies the burn effect as soon as it hits the enemy, meaning the damage following the initial blast will be increased. This effect will also increase the burn damage over time. Now, Antagonizer's Wrath also work with Elder Maxon. This will increase the burn damage even further. Keep in mind because there is a cap to his burn damage. Antagonizer's Wrath will not be as effective against boss enemy because normally the burn damage should be sufficient to reach the cap without the need of using Antagonizer's Wrath. Alright, for a Paladin Dance just like Elder Maxon, the stats you should look for are damage and HP ideally both. For attachment, I assume most are running the Brotherhood of Seal set, and it's also what I prefer to run on him. Besides the unique set effect that gives him 7% more damage, this set of attachment is extremely powerful at cleaning up the enemy one by one. Though it can be awkward sometimes if you didn't manage to execute the target and simply have to wait for your AP to recharge. His fourth perk does somewhat help with that. Alright, next we got the Silver Shroud, and for stats, you want to prioritize damage, HP ideally both. Guardian's Armor does give him a unique set effect that gives him a percentage HP boost, which is pretty nice. It's also an option worth considering. But I personally prefer to run the Brotherhood of Steel set, because if you execute an enemy or enemy attacker in most cases, it will allow you to recast his ability almost immediately. Alright, Dr. Zimmer is up next. The stats you want to prioritize are damage and critical, ideally both. Now with Zimmer, it really comes down to Power Good Neighbor or Combat Zone Gladiator. Because these attachments are RNG dependent, with Combat Zone Gladiator requiring slightly more RNG in order to maximize its effectiveness, which is why it'll be difficult to pinpoint which attachment is better for Zimmer. That being said though, I am having a lot of success with Power Good Neighbor, not only because Power Good Neighbor can make better use of his better critical perk, that sounded weird, with Combat as on Gladiator, after you landed your initial critical, which triggered the effect of the attachments, you have a 8 second window to deal 30% more damage. 8 second roughly translates into 2 basic attack, meaning you have 2 chances to land another critical in order to increase its effectiveness. 
Alright, up next we got Desdemona. For her, the stats you want are damage or HP, ideally both. Attach from Ice, Vampire is my, is my go-to option for her in both PvP and PvE. On top of her low cooldown and quick cast animation, she can almost instantly regain an insane amount of HP back, and this has the ability to turn a lot of fights around. Alright, up next we got the Mayor of Good Neighbor. The stats you want are damage or HP, ideally both. For attachment, although the gesture gives him a unique set effect, you should run this based on the circumstance in which your team has a character that can help trigger the gesture's bonus. Otherwise, given he is completely immune to rats, on his own you can also run Vampire's Might, Champion Set, and maybe even the Brotherhood of Steel. Next, we got Preston Garvey. Just like Zimmer, you should also prioritize damage and critical for Preston. I believe Power Gunnimber is better for Preston because it will make better use of his better critical perk. Again, Combat Zone Glider can also work for sure, but as I said in the case for Zimmer, because after you land at your initial critical, you only have 8 seconds to land another critical in order to further increase the bonus damage, and 8 seconds roughly translates into 2 basic attack, so there are slightly more RNG factors involved. Right, up next we got Mother Iso, Iso I still don't know how to say her name. The stats you want for her are damage and HP, ideally both. Attachment wise, I believe the best option is going to be the champion set, because as she radiates herself more, it will also increase her damage, fairly straightforward. Also because she often put herself in some pretty dangerous spot by radiating herself, you can also run Last Resistance or Guardian's Armor to help increase her survivability. But I'd love to hear what your favorite attachment is for any of these characters, so please do share them in the comment section below. I've been covering Fall Shelter Online since the summer of 2019. If you're interested in Fall Shelter Online, be sure to subscribe. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Later.